Hello, Latin 2. We are on to chapter 44's translation, and yes, I too can make bad hygiene decisions uh, over the break and, uh, and then forget that I have to do videos. So welcome. This is my face, and now you see why I keep a beard. Uh, we are on chapter 44, uh, Stop Thief. It's on page 175. Uh, this chapter really kind of uh, brings to the fore the idea of the ablative absolute. Um, if you want a lesson on that, uh, please respond and let me know. Uh, to me, it's one of those things that we've already been over a bunch of times, but if you feel like you need a refresher of that, or uh, cum clauses and indirect com uh, questions, uh, let me know, because otherwise I'm going to assume that it's going well. Uh, so we're on page 175. Again, I'm going to do my best to respect the tenses, uh, so if you hear me backing up a little bit, that's fine. Uh, get out your red pen and correct your translation accordingly. Uh, and here we go. Oh, and it's probably going to be a two-parter uh, just because, you know, I love to add in a lot of little history things. And it's been a minute and I've still just been doing intro. So here we go. Uh, Marcus and Sextus, having left from school together with Eucleides and another slave, were going home. Uh, suddenly, Eucleides says to the boys, uh, do y'all wish to go to the baths? Uh, with these words having been heard, uh, the boys were rejoicing greatly, uh, or most greatly. Uh, soon, they arrived at the baths, and they entered into the changing room, uh, because it was already full, or which was already full of boys, who, having left from the school, uh, had come uh, with their slave tutors. Uh, there, they took off their clothing. Now, I want to go back to that line four, the quote that you see there. A quote is a relative pr uh, pronoun referring to the apoditerium. Uh, that's why it's not a because, it's a quote uh, that is that or which. Uh, and you even heard me stumble over it for a second, but then I realized that, yeah, apoditerium was right there. So that's why that gets translated that way. Now we're on line six. Marcus, with his clothes having been taken off, says, now let us go into the exercise yard. But Eucleides says, no, uh, your father ordered me uh, to bring you home before the ninth hour. And if you do the math, it's summertime, so sunrise is at six, so seven, six to seven is one hour, seven to eight is two hours, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three o'clock. So you're seeing that they had a better school schedule than you did. Uh, in fairness, they didn't actually understand things like science. So, uh, let's see. Uh, from there, uh, a, uh, let's see. Uh, he said to another slave, he being uh, Euclides said to another slave, to whom the name was Acellus, stay here. Now, I want to call your attention to the cui nomen erat, to whom the name was. That is a dative of possession. Uh, it's, you could have just used cuius, uh, also would have worked, but it's nice to have options. Uh, stay here. Uh, guard these or guard the clothes carefully, uh, for uh, many thieves are accustomed. Uh, there are many thieves here who are accustomed uh, uh, to. Well, yeah. Uh, for there are many thieves here who are accustomed. Uh, who steal uh, or who sell uh, stolen clothing in the city, okay? So, hic enim solent esse. Solent almost always takes a, uh, sorry, there's a lovely dove out on my, my, uh, my fence. Uh, solent always takes a uh, complementary infinitive. Um, and so that's why you see solent esse. Uh, but it, they're accustomed to being, so they're accustomed to be. So in other words, there are many thieves who are accustomed. Um, and then they steal, notice vestimenta surepta. That's not an ablative absolute. That's actually just an accusative plural in the neuter. And then you're seeing participles being played with here too. And clothes which had been stolen or just stolen clothes. Uh, to which uh, Acellus responded. Now you could say to which or to whom. It doesn't matter. Uh, both would work. It kind of depends on if you think he's responding to the statement or if he's responding to Euclides. So to which Acellus responded, I always carefully guard the clothes. No, uh, nobody with me guarding uh, is able to steal the clothes. 
And I like that you use serifera here because sub plus rapio rapra is to grab from underneath, which is to steal. Uh, then the boys, uh, with their clothes having been handed over, uh, entered into the warm room and from there into the hot room uh, where uh, there was a large crowd of men. Suddenly, however, Sextus shouted, uh, I am ill or I am weak. You could even use weak there. Uh, I am ill. Uh, I am not able to endure this heat. Uh, I will go out and uh, I will return to the changing room. And that's where I'm gonna stop it uh, because then the action picks up and also we're about five minutes in and I like to keep the videos short. Uh, so we're on line 15 on page 175, uh, chapter 44. Uh, and as you've heard, there's been several ablative absolutes. Now, again, if you haven't written this down, write it down first, then come back to this and, and do the corrections. Uh, if you have and you want more practice with ablative absolutes, um, I would encourage you to take a look at page uh, 178 and do exercise 44D. I don't care about the temporal relationship stuff that's neither here nor there. And also recognize that number eight on 44D is not a true ablative absolute. Uh, but I would review 44D and 44E if you want more practice with ablative absolutes. 44B is just using participles, which is also very valuable. Uh, but for right now, we've already done all those several chapters ago, so if you don't want to do the extra practice or you don't need it, that's fine, but there you go, it's there. As always, email me with it, uh, d-a-m-i-a-n hyphen harmony at s-c-u-s-d dot e-d-u. Uh, you need to somehow indicate when you're using a macron, maybe just change it to bold if you don't know how to insert macrons. Uh, and if you send it to me, I will give you feedback. Uh, otherwise, I assume everything's going well. All right, I'm going to hit the button.